I'm Zachary Fowler of Fowler's Makery and Mischief, and you're watching episode one of 87 Days, the complete reenactment of everything I did out there on a loan, but as if I had done it here in Maine with the resources that I can find around here to do it over again. You're going to see the Duck Hunter and the Duck Hunter Mark II, which had a propeller on it. Uh, all the traps I made out there that never made it on the show, how I caught my 63 fish and two birds. So stick around, subscribe so you can see it all. I thought we'd start out with uh, coming out here to the shelter I made that in my casting video that got me out there on a loan. Side of my little shelter. It's almost like a little magical fortress place. Lay down here under my pile of hemlock. Getting old, it's getting old. And it's hot out here. So, wow, I think I'm gonna lose the hat now that I've established my bona fides and you know who I am. Let's head on over to the site I have picked out for the new shelter. Base camp, base camp. Got my duffel bag with all the stuff I brought out there with me on a loan. A couple extra things, we'll talk about that. And my camera bag and the Cameron Canon ADD here. And we're out at the new base camp. This is where I'm gonna build and reenact everything I did out there on a loan, but as if I had done it here in Maine with the resources that I have here. And uh, we're on the back corner of my property here. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do it all. I'm gonna do it all. This isn't gonna be like my normal stuff It's gonna be a little more free free-flowing. I'm not gonna be doing any magic tricks um, If I can help it. I love to do that when I get into the editing I'm gonna try to keep it a little more Just like I did on alone like I didn't have magic tricks and I didn't have magic editing I talked to the camera all the time and I talked about some silly things. I I talked about some serious things I talk, you know, mostly they put the serious stuff on you see me crying and because I miss carrots, you know, and uh, my family. But, uh, but I also talked about a lot of silly stuff they never even shared about the whole book I wrote in my head about space wizards. So I'll tell you all about that. And so let's get to it. I'm gonna start by chopping down some of these trees, clear a space, and I'll dump out my bag here and uh, show you everything I brought with me and why I chose to bring it with me out there. Oh, there it is. That's everything, minus one or two things. It looks like a big pile, but it's really not that much stuff to go and survive 87 days with. So let me uh, reorganize it, and we'll talk about each thing here. All right, well here it all is, minus the darn ferro rod. I, have to, I found it earlier today, I ordered a new one because mine never came back from Patagonia, and I think I lost it out of the bottom of this old duffel bag coming up here. But I can link it right here as my first item, the most important, the ferro rod. Gotta have a fire, ferro rod's the best way to go. Um, it was just a six inch ferro rod, half inch thick. I did almost wanna take this instead. This is my fire kit that my dad gave me, but without the char cloth, which would not was not a permissible item or the tins, this uh, little fire kit, which I use all the time and uh, prefer, because. It's just fun. Uh, it wasn't the option. So I went with a ferro rod, which is what everybody's gone with, I think, so far. I don't think anybody's ever brought just a flint and steel. Um, <clears throat> and number two was my slingshot. Uh, this was the initial slingshot that I made to go out there on the show. And it's, you can see it's laminated, but right here, after shooting it and hitting the frame once, uh, I broke it so before I even left for the show. Uh, so, oh, and you'll notice there's something weird about these bands. I'll get to that in the next video called the hacks of my gear. Um, so I had two bands sets like you were allowed and the slingshot 
I ended up taking the one that I had been shooting already for four months, which turned out to be a lot more resilient. I got, uh, my ammo was 30 pieces of ammo, and most of them are missing, but these are still some that I have left. All my stuff came from Simple Shot. They uh, sent me custom, custom stuff that I could customize and make extra special long bands. Uh, my multi-tool, which I chose, was the Swiss Spirit multi-tool. I'll get into greater detail on this, as everything that I modified on this is kind of a hack. So that'll be in the next upcoming video. And then we have the paracord. We had, I believe it was 20 meters. I'll link it right whoop, over here, 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 here. Okay, right here. Uh, 20 meters of paracord. Uh, this turned out to be awesome. I love paracord. Titan. Good, good, solid paracord. Um, and then my fishing hooks. I had 25 hooks and I had I only got one spool with me, but I had half uh, 150 yards of 50 pound test line, and the other half was 20 pound test line, uh, which that worked out really well for me. And here's my hooks. I had an assortment of hooks. Some of these hooks ended up being too big. I had five of them that were too big, and, and some were just right. Yeah, the, the, I had 24 hooks. We were allowed 25. One of them was I used was a sewing needle. My Coleman pot, it was a fairly cheap thing, has this handle that comes off so you can grab on. And basically it's a two quart pot with a pan lid so you can use both. This kept twisting and warping from the fire, but because I could put it like this with a stick in the end and put two pins in it, I could extend my handle and put it over the fire without great, great difficulty. Three times a day, it's, it's got a dark, dark patina on it. Three times a day, boil it, mash it, fish head soup. Three times a day. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this thing costs like 14 bucks on Amazon. And I loved it. The saw. This is a very thin German made, what's it say there? I'll link it right on top of it here. Um, it's a very strange saw. It came from Amazon, it was 100 bucks. It's a very thin saw, but it's got a multi-use tooth to it, where the teeth are not a cross cut and not a rip saw. They're, they're half and half, basically. They're each set in one direction, one set in the other way, alternating down through the blade. And its thinness actually worked to my advantage. Uh, it, I needed to sharpen it, unlike a Japanese saw, which I considered bringing, but not knowing the conditions and knowing that I wanted to be able to do big firewood, and I didn't think a Japanese saw would do it for me. <clears throat> I chose this so that it would go with the multi-tool. The file on the multi-tool would allow me to sharpen that. And I was able to. If I had brought a bigger, heavier, more expensive crosscut saw, I wouldn't have been able to sharpen it with the file on the multi-tool. The multi-tool allowed me to straighten the teeth every so often and file it. It worked great. I'll show you how I sharpened that in another future video. I cursed it a lot while I was out there, but I also realized that with the multi-tool and the ability to sharpen it, it was probably the best thing I could have brought. And especially considering the firewood I ended up finding out there, the dead standing forest that had like 10 and eight inch trees that I chopped down with my other, one of my other 10 items here, the felling ax. I used this for pounding my dock in. You can see that little video here. Um, pounding the and building the dock and I used it for chopping down the trees that I uh, felled for firewood which were generally 10 to 8 inches in diameter and gave me good solid dry standing firewood. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it but this is the council, a council felling axe. Um, bought it on Amazon. <clears throat> Cold steel, I spent 16 bucks on this before I left to Patagonia. 16 bucks for a cold steel special forces Spetsnaz shovel. This and my slingshot were like my pride and joy. I I love it. Look at how dirty this thing is. There's a crack in the handle now that after one year, I finally, I finally made it, uh, I finally broke it here by throwing it at stuff. But other than that, I'm going to glue it back together. It's still kicking and it still works just fine. Still sharp. And um, I love this thing. I dug with it. I dug my fire pit. I was able to dig worms and grubs every day. That's what caught me the 63 fish because I was able to dig with this all the time. I dug my steps so I could be safe getting up and over that hill that I, where I had to build my shelter. Um, 
I mean, I can't even get into the beginning, like how much stuff I did with this thing. I threw it at a tree, I had a little circle, I pretended it was a zombie head. It was how I entertained myself a lot. So I, I chucked it at the tree. Um, this thing is the best, this is like the best tool I've ever owned, I think. Um, I, I don't know what I like more, my slingshot or this. Even though my slingshot only got me one bird, I, I just, I love this shovel. I mean, the, the blade on it and the workability of this thing, the way it was able to cut the bamboo down so I could build my shelter. One chop cuts right through the bamboo. Digging the steps, you know, and, the, and it holds its edge despite all the digging that I did. And it went really well, you know, that's, all my tools kind of worked with each other. The, the multi-tool was a companion tool to this because I would whack it into a piece of wood and then I could take the file on it and sharpen it. I'd sharpen this one edge uh, really sharp all the time, keeping it always sharp. This I would sharpen once a week with the, the kind of the hacksaw edge of the file so that it would kind of leave some striations here in it. But I didn't want to waste my file because it those multi-tool files, you know, they don't last that long. And I was already having to push a lot harder at the end. I think, uh, you know, 200 days and that file would have been worthless. I mean, it was already getting down there. And then this one I would sharpen uh, once a week as well. And this would be the edge that I would use if I was chopping and I knew I was gonna be hitting the dirt after whacking something. I mean, the shovel is like the most understated thing. So many people were like, oh, what is this guy bringing a shovel for? He thinks he's gonna build a rocket stove. I didn't build a rocket stove. Um, I'm gonna try and actually build one out here in this shelter that I built out here. Everybody seemed to think that this was like a foolish item to bring. Uh, um, people making comments all about it on you know Reddit and all this stuff when I got back. Uh, they, this thing was awesome. I, I almost think I could have lived without the ax because I had this in a place with bamboo. But the ax, when it did what it needed to do by cutting the big firewood, was just indispensable. Uh, here's a new version of it, so you can see. I had a leather sheath for it, I don't know what happened to it. But here's the, new ver the newest one that Cold Steel sent me to replace this one. They sent me one to replace this one, and uh, and I, I just haven't been able to put the old one down. I love it, it's still ticking. I don't see any point. I'm gonna put some glue in the handle and keep going with it. Maybe I'll even put a new coat of uh, varnish on the handle. And uh, I don't know, and I got another one here. So I'll always have more than enough shovels. I'll probably take a brand new one if I do go out again on another show someday. I'm gonna go winners, winners against winners or something. Um, I did purchase this before I went out. And I thought, I went back and forth about using this silky, you know, versus the bigger saw. But I knew that with the silky, the teeth are resilient and they last for a long time. But I was concerned that I'd be out there so long that they'd get dull and I'd have no way to sharpen it with the multi-tool. I knew I could sharpen this, I knew I couldn't sharpen this. I decided to go with what I knew I could sharpen. Of course, the last of my 10 items, the Slumberjack sleeping bag. Temperature, Slumberjack, temperatures of, temperatures of negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Baloney, baloney, baloney. That sleeping bag is garbage, uh, except for the fact that it was so fluffy, it was comfortable to sleep on, uh, I had to put hot rocks under my bed even when I first got there for that whole first month just to keep myself warm through the night and I'd wake up in the morning a little bit cold. I didn't have to do that when I was in my shelter up over the hill but I still did it every night because it just felt good, that nice warm spot underneath your chest and it didn't take much work to put four hot rocks six inches down. So I don't recommend that sleeping bag but I knew that going into it, it was a hundred bucks and I picked something that was big and comfortable and fluffy enough that it would give me some cushion when I was uh, out there. So that's all my stuff. The only thing I wish I had been able to bring differently was my journal. This is my journal that I used, that Jamie made me, uh, and it has all kinds of stuff in here. You can uh, see that on my website, uh, fowlersmakerymischief.com. You can see the, the sketches and stuff that I made leading up to going out on the show and all the details. Uh, all the traps I was planning on making and all the ones I made and I'm gonna be making out here on this series 87 days But I really wanted to bring my journal But they wanted the cameras to be our journal and the camera became my friend it became my Wilson and so it wasn't a big deal 
And, uh, but I still wanted to keep record of my stuff, so that's why the wizard staff came about with all that carvings, my whole story there. Yeah, so that's all for me today. I hope that wasn't too boring for you. Next time we'll get into the hacks that I did out there, um, into my gear before I left, and the third episode we're gonna start getting we'll start making some stuff here I'm gonna get into uh, setting up my shelter the initial shelter the way I did and so I'll talk to you about the initial whoa 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 I said talk but I meant build it the things that I did when I first got out there as far as getting fishing lines in the water and getting the fish uh, my fishuation going so that I was able to eat and uh, we'll take it from there I'm just gonna keep doing everything I did out there on the show but as if I did it here in Maine a little bit and we'll talk about what I did, what I didn't do, what I wanted to do, what I wish I had done and all that great stuff and what I'll do different next time. So thanks for watching. Fowler out.